we've talked a little bit about materials and a little bit about particles and a little bit about parameters and today we're going to talk about all of them together we're going to be talking about how to set parameters for your materials from your particle systems this is actually going to be a very very interesting thing to do so let's get straight into it Ignore all the extra particle systems that you see uh, here in my content browser. This is the third time I'm recording this. I messed up a little bit with recording, okay? Anyway, let's make ourselves a new uh, particle emitter here. So with FX, uh, great emitter. I uh, would just gonna make that a fountain, why not? And we'll call this fountain something like uh, dynamic param emitter just so that I know what it actually is. And we'll have our default fountain here, which is just wonderful. And we're gonna make a special material for this in a moment. But first, what I actually wanna do is just to show this off a little bit better, I'm going to uh, replace this with a mesh renderer. So we're going to be rendering a mesh, and the mesh we're gonna be rendering, let's say those are gonna be spheres instead, which is just fantastic. In there, let's uh, make ourselves a new material for that. So that will be our mesh uh, particle dynamic material, whatever we want to call it. And unlike the previous material that I talked about, which was going to be like additive and uh, non-lit, this is just going to be a normal material that we're going to be rendering on our particles. Because that's the easiest way to show off dynamic parameters, to be honest with you. So we'll just simply add in a quick particle color here, so that we can hook that up into the base color. And a little bit of a uh, useful tip here might be, instead of using the blend mode opaque, you won't use the blend mode for translucent. So that we can put this into the opacity, like the alpha, right? But translucent materials, especially for particles, tend to be quite expensive to render because they are more expensive to render to begin with but then when you have an object that is translucent behind another object that is translucent your gpu absolutely loses its mind it doesn't like that and that is what happens a lot with particles so instead of using translucent that is one of the reasons that we usually use additive uh, but we want a more normal surface uh, renderer here so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to do this with mask you'll see that mask doesn't really support opacity, but we can put this into a dither temporal AA, which is going to dither this opacity. Mask will only allow a pixel to be fully opaque or fully transparent, so it's a lot easier to render, you don't get that overdraw issue with objects behind each other, and you can just put that into the opacity mask. So now it's going to interpolate very, very cleverly with uh, the alpha putting in what kind of dithering pattern it needs to create to simulate that kind of translucency. So I'll actually, oh, this is the default value. Fantastic. So if we zoom into this a little bit, you can see that there's this like little more uh, effect going on. And that's because there's a very, very tiny pattern, uh, which if we look at it a little bit from a distance, uh, we can see through this. There's not a single halfway see-through pixel here. This is entirely built up out of pixels that are entirely opaque or entirely transparent. Uh, that's a little bit of material stuff for you, even though this is a particle series. So this is going to be the basis of our new material. So let's actually go back into our emitter and override materials. And we're going to uh, set the override material here to being our uh, mesh particle dynamic. And you can see that it does have a little bit of a strange fade out effect. Uh, the further we are away, the less of a problem this is. It doesn't quite look the same, but this is a million times easier to render than translucency. Anyway, what we're going to be doing is in particle updates, I want to add a dynamic material parameter. And here we get four sets of four parameters that we can pass through into our material. So we have index 0, index 1, and if we enable it, you can see that we have four uh, values there as well, and index 2 and index 3. So that's a total of 16 float values that we can pass through into our material. For the most part, that should probably be enough for a single emitter. Now you can even disable individual parameters here to save just a little bit of resources, because it is putting through that information to the shader. Uh, and if you're not using it, you might as well just disable it. And we're only going to be using two here, which is going to be parameter 0 and parameter 1, uh, because we're going to be using this for the 
metallicness and the roughness. So let's go back into our material and set that up because we want to put something into the roughness and something into the metallicness. So in here we can say our dynamic parameters and we much the same get our parameter index value. So that is which one of these sets we're going to be corresponding to. For us, that's of course going to be just zero. And then we've got parameter one, two, three, and four. Uh, combined one, two, and three. So that's RGB. And RGBA is all four of them combined into one pin. It's a little bit annoying, and you have to pay a little bit of attention here if you're still getting used to this. Uh, the call parameter one, two, three, and four here, but the call parameters zero, one, two, and three here. For some reason, they start counting at zero on the particle side, and they start counting at one in the material side. This seems like an oversight to me. <laughs> Uh, but you're just kind of going to have to deal with it. So we're going to use parameter 1 here and put that into the metallic value. And then we're going to use parameter 2 and put that into the roughness. And now we can apply that. And now we can drive the metallicness and the roughness of our particles through the particle emitter. So if we uh, set this, for instance, to 1 and uh, 0 now, and actually I'm going to go into our particle core and stop scaling the alpha just so that you can see it a little bit better, you can see we are suddenly very, very uh, metallic or very reflective. And then when I set this up to a value of 1, uh, we are still metallic but not reflective anymore because our roughness is all the way up to 1. And if we set this to 0, we will be reflective uh, but just or, or non-reflective and non-metallic. And now we'll be reflective and non-metallic. You kind of get that point, right? So the neat thing, of course, is that we can get these uh, values from curves just as any other more complex value. Uh, which will make us, let's see, I think this is the roughness, so that should be going down, and then the metallicness should be going up, and that will create this effect where the start is almost like chalk-like spheres in the material, and by the time they die, uh, they are closer to looking like metallic balls. So if we uh, set these keys instead to about 50%, uh, we will see that transition happening a lot sooner, and we can just influence whatever we want with these values. Now, let's go back into scale color and set scale alpha back to true, and we're actually going to keep the alpha to 1 until the very end here. And I don't know if this is exactly like the kind of particle system that you want to be using, to be fair with you. Like, this looks a little weird, but it's good at illustrating the point of we're setting these material parameters through our particle dynamically. And of course, you can do a bunch of stuff with this. Like, we can, for instance, uh, instead of uh, putting our particle color into the base color, we can just make our base color uh, black instead. And our particle color can go into the emissive color here. Uh, but we can add a multiplier with the third parameter here. And now we can just set our color as a normal color in our particle system. And then we have a parameter for how intense the emissiveness is that is separate from influencing the color itself, which might be useful. Just for the sake of being more easily able uh, to animate this. So if we go into our uh, dynamic parameters here, uh, let's just turn off these two because they literally don't matter anymore at this point. If we turn on this one and we set this to like 100, you can see that they're very glowy. And of course, once again, the huge upside here is that it's very easy to do this from a curve. So we start at... Um, one and we end at zero if we set that scale curve to 100 we now start at 100 and then they slowly uh, fade out both in their alpha but also in their intensity uh, of glow maybe 100 is a little too much to show that let's do that at 50 and then uh maybe let's move this key a little over in this direction and now you'll be able to see that they stop shining as brightly fairly quickly. Now, there's a bunch of things that you can do, like anything that you can realistically hook up to a material parameter for a material instance, you can also now drive through your particle emitters, and that can be really, really powerful. So just something that you need to be aware of. It's actually fairly straightforward and fairly simple to use. Go have fun with it. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters.
Earl Monsevel Erno, and my cave digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 